Well, now on SUTV News, packing a punch. What to expect this weekend when the snow rolls in. It was hot for nearly two decades. How this music is making a comeback. And in sports, the Bison win a thriller in the Dome and are now number one in the nation. It was a close call for one of our own. Hello everyone and thanks for joining us. I'm Ryan Borstelman. Army Specialist Eric Muse is recovering in a hospital in Germany after being wounded in a bomb explosion in Afghanistan. Muse was deployed in August with the Colorado-based 576th Engineer Company. He suffered two broken legs and other injuries when his convoy was hit by a roadside bomb. Muse will be back in the U.S. in a few days after six to eight weeks of recovery. He will be coming home. Health insurance coverage has been a hot topic over the last couple of years. The North Dakota Student Association is recommending changes to the health insurance plan currently offered to students. The system in place right now is available to any of the eligible students of the 48,000 in the North Dakota University system. The plan, which has been in place for over 20 years, provides only $25,000 worth of coverage and may not be enough. One of the proposed changes, which will ultimately be decided by the State Board of Higher Education, is an increase of up to $100,000. We simply need to take a look at are there other options out there that can be included with the one we currently have to give uh, greater availability of choice to our students based on their, their occupation and based on their certain medical needs. The majority of those who rely on the coverage are international students who are required to sign up. The North Dakota Student Association hopes to see results by the fall of 2012. Well, it's that time of year for hunters. Deer gun opener starts Friday at noon in North Dakota and Saturday in Minnesota, but it could be a tough start to the season. The National Weather Service is predicting heavy bands of snow in western and central Dakotas by Sunday. Rain will turn into snow late Saturday night. The exact tracking and timing of the storm can and will likely change. The National Weather Service is asking that everyone packs a winter survival kit if they are traveling. While the FM area will not be getting the brunt of the storm, their chance that to see the white stuff on the ground. This week's Sidewalk Stampede went on campus to see if you're ready for the first snowfall of the year. I am not ready for the snow. I didn't even know that it was supposed to snow this weekend. I don't even have an ice scraper for my car, and my car is barely starting this early in the November, so I don't know how it's gonna do once it actually starts snowing. Yeah, I love snow. I'm super excited for it. I'm waiting all summer for it. I hate snow because it's always snowing at NDSU. Um, I'm really not excited for the snow. I wish it would stay this way, this weather, for about two more months, and then then maybe a little bit of snow. We, we love, love snow! snow. Woo! <laughs> well, still to come on SUTV News, Kelly Lehman, the Associate Director of Athletic Academics, is in studio. Stay tuned. SUTV News is being brought to you by Stop and Go. Stop and Go. We're always there. With MapBus being the easiest, greenest, and most efficient way to get around North Dakota State University, there are tons of reasons to MapBus. I'm at bus to get to class on time. I don't have to use my car, waste gas, or waste time finding a parking spot. I'm at bus because their hybrid buses not only help our community and our state, but they're also helping our world. I'm at bus not only to get around campus, but to get around the Fargo community. The 25 different routes get me anywhere I need to be. There are many reasons to map bus. Come find yours. Join the herd. Be map bus strong.
Jimmy John's, America's favorite sandwich. Delivery guys. I have a few different cards I want to put it on. There is an easier way to do this. Book charging and rentals, only at the NDSU Bookstore. Welcome back to SUTV News. In studio with me is Kelly Lehman, the Associate Director of Athletic Academics. Welcome, Kelly. Thank, Thank you for joining us. Um, what, as an Associate Director, what, what does your job actually entail? Um, basically, what I do is I help the student athletes kind of maneuver through the system um, because as a student athlete, they not only participate in their sport and try to go to school, they also have some other time commitments. So I do that as well as uh, help them with their eligibility and uh, do some NCAA clearinghouse and from, um, eligibility issues. Okay, uh, and for those who don't know, uh, what does it actually mean to be a student athlete? Um, basically, you're a student. That's why the student athlete is <laughs> first. Um, but you also, by NCAA standards, um, you're allowed to do 20 hours a week of your activity or your sport. And then um, with that, it's almost like having a part-time job while you're going to school at the same time. And then on weekends, you travel, so you're not in town as well to study. Okay, um, what uh, physical uh, facilities are in place at NDSU to, to assist the student athletes in, in meeting those eligibility requirements? Yeah. Um, probably the, the primary one that we have is our um, ACE facility, which is our Academic Collegian Enhancement Facility. And actually, that's a facility for all student students on the campus of North Dakota State. But athletically, we use that as well. And that's um, where uh, the, our athletic academic personnel are basically housed. And that's in the West Dining Center. And in that facility, um, we have uh, group tutoring, uh, so it's free tutoring for 100 and 200 level courses. And we also have uh, learning rooms geared to how students learn. So kinesthetic room, which is more of an active room, um, and then the small group rooms as well. Okay. Um, you know, I, I know you were a, uh, the women's basketball coach for some time, and uh, you're obviously at your job now. What, what have you seen that are the biggest challenges that student athletes tend to face, different from regular students? I think the time commitment. Um, you know, they're a minimum of 20 hours a week that they're committed to their sport. And again, on the weekends, they're not they're traveling, so they're not here. So it's more difficult for them to um, to do some active studying. Uh, the other aspect I think is. Um, their commitment when they're in their athletic field is pretty strong towards that area. So I think the balancing and the speed of everything that comes at them um, is quite a, quite of a challenge. Uh, yeah, I, can, I can imagine it gets, it's uh, very difficult to balance the, the amount of homework versus the amount of practice at mm -hmm. times. Um, yeah. you know, I can imagine this is very difficult. What uh, is uh, the, the biggest thing that you guys do to actually assist in, in reaching those goals for the, uh, the eligibility that the NCAA requirement? Um, what we do is we have a group of students. Uh, basically, there's 367 athletes at North Dakota State. So there are a group of students that we meet with weekly and to help them with their time management um, and also to help them with uh, if they get behind, how to catch up. Um, ultimately, the student athlete has to do the work because they're the student. Um, but we facilitate maybe more time management aspects, help them with study skills, um, you know, anything that we can do to, to make it a little more smoother transition. Right, right. Um, and about uh, graduation, most student athletes do not actually go on to, you know, the professional sports or whatever they're doing. Um, mm -hmm. um, would you guys guide them along the path of uh, basically advising them to, to their graduation? Um, we technically don't advise them. They have their own advisors in their, in their curriculum. But what we do, or predominantly what my office does is, there's certain NCA standards that they have to cover, and um, they're ideally a little bit more accelerated. Um, a, a general student can slow down if, if they run into some classes. Um, the NCA basically says you have five years to graduate. So uh, what basically what we do to help them with that is we make sure that they hit their deadlines, which basically declares them eligible or ineligible to participate in right, their sport. Right. What is the minimum uh, GPA for an NCAA athlete? Um, the, it depends on what year they are. Um, the standards as a freshman is a, a 1.8 GPA, and you have to have 24 credits at the end of your sophomore year. It's 40% of your curriculum, mm -hmm. and a 1.9. 
and then as a, a, ju a junior, it would be 60% of their curriculum in a 2-0, and as a fourth year, 80% of their curriculum in a 2-0, and then, of course, their senior year, they have to graduate. Right. We're lucky at NDSU that the, our average GPA for our student athletes is about a 3.04. That's very good, actually. Yeah. That's very good. Yeah. Well, thank you for joining us very much. Well, thank you. It's good having you. When we return, it's making a major comeback, how 80s music is thriving in younger generations. Right now, though, it's packed. There's always something happening on the NDSU campus. Catch it all on SUTV News on Cable One Channel 14. Brought to you in part by Shields and Stop and Go. Jimmy John's, America's favorite sandwich, Delivery Guys. Well, there's a good reason why you hear Bon Jovi's Living on a Prayer at Bison football games. 80s music has been revived thanks to classic rock stations. SUTV's Jake Schroer has more. 80s music has made a comeback. Classic rock station 107.9 The Fox plays various 80s hits that have a whole new audience thanks to use in movies and other media and being played on the radio constantly. Music from Journey on the way. Right now though, it's Pat Benatar on The Fox. But the question is, why is 80s music still a draw? I think a lot of the music was written around having just nothing but a good time. I think uh, that it's mindless music that it's easy to relate to. Johnson also says parents exposing their kids to the music helped bring it back. This could explain why students enjoy the 80s hits. Anyone who hears Don't Stop Believing, they instantly get the rush of emotion from the music. They get the energy that comes with it. And a lot of music in the 80s carries that feel. The only question left is, will it last? Not all the artists, not all the songs will remain around forever. But I do think there are, there are certain, again, songs and artists that will be here for a long time to come. And for the final verdict? There are so many icons that come from the 80s that it's impossible to not draw upon them. Even in, I myself am a songwriter and I know I find myself drawing from Journey, Rick Springfield, Guns N' Roses, and a lot of those 80s bands. For SUTV News, I'm Jake Schroer. 107.9 The Fox does commercial free Mondays from 9 to 5. Be sure to check the Fargo Dome and Civic Center schedules to see when some 80s bands might come to town. Well, Ryan, these 80 bands are making a comeback, and, uh, you know, it's great. I, the hearing Living on a Prayer at the Bison football games really gets everyone fired yeah, up. Yeah, there's a lot. Thunderstruck played when they come out. So, I mean, there's a lot of it, and, you know, that adds to the atmosphere of the already great Bison Speaking football of the games. atmosphere, this weekend, Bison football was electric. Number one in the country. They didn't know about it. We'll show you how they got to number one in the country. Coming up, SUTV Sports, coming right back.
$172. How do you want to pay for that today? I have a few different cards I want to put it on. There is an easier way to do this. Book charging and rentals, only at the NDSU Bookstore. I'm at bus to get to class on time. I don't have to use my car, waste gas, or waste time finding a parking spot. I'm at bus because their hybrid buses not only help our community and our state, but they're also helping our world. I'm at bus not only to get around campus, but to get around the Fargo community. The 25 different routes get me anywhere I need to be. There are many reasons of Matt bus. Come find yours. Join the herd. Be Matt bus strong. There's always something happening on the NDSU campus. Catch it all on SUTV News on Cable One Channel 14. Brought to you in part by Shields and Stop and Go. SUTV Sports is being brought to you by Shields. Ready for your next big adventure? Welcome to Shields. Welcome back. For the first time since joining the FCS, the Bison are the number one ranked team in the country. The sports network, Fathead.com poll released on Monday, has the Bison number one. The FCS coaches poll also has the Bison at number one for the first time since 2008. Former, former number one Georgia Southern lost to Appalachian State, but the road to number one wasn't easy for the Bison. Let's take a look at how they got it done at the Fargo Dome. The biggest game ever in the Fargo Dome, number two, number three. DJ McNorton cuts it back after you and I scored first, and the Bison get back on top, 7-3 the lead. To the second quarter, you and I caps off an eight-play drive. David Johnson gets what he needs from two yards out, and the game is tied at 10. Later in the corner, Brock Jensen. Consistent, finds DJ McNorton on the screen pass, makes a man miss, breaks a tackle, two and Matt Veldman shoves him into the end zone. 17-13, Bison at the half. Third quarter, David Johnson stripped by Travis Beck, Kyle Emanuel falls out of the end zone. 24-13, Bison, but this one was not over yet. Backup quarterback, David Laffner, finds Johnson. He takes this one 16 yards to the house following the blockers. 24-19, Bison, the defense would have to do it again. Laffner looking deep, trying to get his team back in the game, but they do it again. John Pike gets up, gets the interception of the Bison. Hang on, they beat second-ranked Northern Iowa, 24-19 the final score, 27-19 the final score. Bison 8-0, 5-0 in the conference. Now, the number one ranked team in the country, Georgia Southern, would also lose, so that is what gave the Bison the number one seed in the country. Coming up this week, the Bison take on Indiana State with the number one rush offense in the country. That game Saturday in Indiana. At halftime of the biggest game ever played in the Fargo Dome, NDSU took time to honor one of the best football players in the history of the program. Mike Favor was inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame on July 16th, becoming only the third Bison to be inducted. Favor was a two-time first-team All-American center, starting 51 games in his four-year career. Favor helped lead the Bison to a 44-6-1 overall record, including three you know, I'm on national offensive linemen, and we very seldom get recognized. But really, it was an honor for the team. That's the way I look at it. And for the university. I mean, to be uh, put in the same hall as some of the greats, you know, North Dakota State is represented, it's wonderful. There are currently just over 1,000 members in the College Football Hall of Fame of the nearly 5 million that have played and coached since it began. Favor is currently the principal of Robbinsdale Cooper High School in Crystal, Minnesota. Well, new faces were on display for the first time at the Bison Sports Arena as basketball began exhibition play. Both the men and women coming off seasons finishing at or below the 500 mark in the Summit League faced a challenge to start this season. The Bison men 
Starting things off in the late game, taking on Crosstown rival MSUM the Dragons. First half, Trayvon Wright, he's got a 42-inch vertical and he slams it down with one hand. 37-34, Bison at the half. Late in the game, Trayvon with the steal, but the clock beats him and we're going overtime tied at 67. In the first overtime, Scotty Kenny, he was lights out. He had 12 of his 16 in the overtime and we're going to double overtime to start out the season. Story of the game, DJ Hamilton, he hits the floater. He has 32 points, and the Dragons stun the Bison. They win this one 90-84. Marshall Bjorklund leads the way for the men with 13 points. And the women's side taking on the University of Sioux Falls Cougars. In the first half, the Bison with eight new players on the roster this year. One of them is Daniel Murai, backing down six foot one defender Jamie Hofer for the bucket. 39-31 Bison. Later, Jamie Van Kirk, the floater in the lane. That's good. Also a freshman, 50-46. The Bison take the lead. Later in the half, junior college transfer, Brittany Gaines for three, no doubt about it. The Bison go on to win this one. 78-68, the final score. Hannah Linz leads the way for the Bison with 18 points. Bison Volleyball looking for first place at the Benson Bunker Fieldhouse, taking on the Mavericks of UNO. Bison defense getting it done. Jana Diley, Chrissy Knuth at the block. Bison win the first set 25-11. Second set, Lopez to Lambertson. Great kill for Megan. Bison win the set 25-18. Third set, Lopez to Jana Diley. Like clockwork, the Bison win the set. They sweep UNO three sets to none. The Bison women's cross country team claim its first conference title in the Summit League Championships in Tulsa. The Bison won the meet by nine points over second place Southern Utah. Heidi Peterson and Jordan Cran led the way, finishing sixth and seventh. Freshman Abby Aspengren was named newcomer of the championship, finishing 21st. And Ryan Godfrey was named coach of the year for the first time in his career. So we're getting to that point where Fall sports are starting to mix with winter sports. It's a busy time of the year, but it's exciting. It is an exciting Football, time, yeah. Football playing well, basketball starting out. They look solid. So, I mean, it's it's going to be a fun couple of weeks. And we're going to be watching the end of the football season and then hopefully a run into the playoffs along with the beginning of the new basketball season. And that's just an exciting time. And everything huge from here for the football team. you got all the pressure on you now. You're number one in the country. Everybody's looking at you. All the pressure's on from here on out. Indiana State, no joke, though. It's not, t it's not easy we on the road. We think we roll over you and I, and uh, we can just pass on any of I don't think it's going to happen. Nah, it's going to be tough. Be tough yeah. Stick with us when we return. A delicious and healthy trend many students are turning to. In today's world, technology has become an integral part of our everyday lives. As students, we use it for entertainment, keeping in touch, and academic purposes. But with great technology comes great responsibility. So, let's talk tech. Copyright is the legal right to control the copying, distribution, modification, display, and performance of certain types of work. It applies to text, graphics, video, audio, and other forms of creative expression. Downloading, sharing, or distributing copyrighted material without permission from the copyright holder is considered a serious offense. In the past, NDSU students have paid thousands of dollars in damages for copyright violations. Depending on the severity and the frequency of the offense, NDSU sanctions could include verbal caution, a letter of warning, loss of computer and network privileges, and termination of a student's enrollment status. You may also be subject to criminal or civil lawsuits which could lead to paying thousands of dollars in settlements. The good news is that it is possible to access movies, television shows, music, etc. legally through other online sources. In addition to the option of obtaining formal permission from the copyright holder to use their work, you can also purchase and download music online through legal sources such as iTunes, Amazon MP3, or Rhapsody. There are also legal options online to access free videos and music, including Hulu, GrooveShark, and Pandora. For a complete list of alternative resources and more information about copyright, visit the IT Security website. Welcome back. Recent trends have many people turning to healthier options. And college students are no exception when it comes to one of the new nutritious treats in Fargo. SUTV's Katie Getz has the story. 
Cherry Berry is the newest self-serve frozen yogurt destination. Employees say things have been going good since they opened on September 30th. It's fun working here. You get to meet a lot of new people and um, people seem to enjoy our yogurt. This frozen yogurt is made with real dairy, not a powder mix. It contains 10 times the amount of probiotics recommended by the National Yogurt Association. It is also a good source of protein and calcium and helps with healthy digestion while boosting your immune system. We actually just started coming to Cherry Berry recently and, and we, we love it. Uh, we think it's great. The frozen yogurt, they have so many different flavors, flavors that uh, naturally I wouldn't even think of. Customers are able to make their own creations. There are 14 rotating flavors of frozen yogurt and more than 50 toppings to choose from. There's a variety of fresh fruits, candies, nuts, and syrup. They do this, this, this neat thing by combining uh, candy with healthy choices of fruit, uh, which you can put in your ice cream to get these uh, different kind of flavors. So um, we love coming here, it's, it's, it's pretty cool. Each bowl is placed on a scale at the register. Customers then pay by the ounce for each creation. As soon as I walked into Cherry Berry here, uh, I thought it was just a really cool place to hang out. There's, they have lots of nice chairs and couches that are sitting around. A variety of TVs and seating areas create a comfortable environment. A party room can be reserved to host any gathering at no cost. Party packages are also available for purchase. Katie Getz, SUTV News. Find a Cherry Berry on 19th Avenue North and 45th Street South. Check them out. Well, Ryan, cherry berry. It looks great. It looks unhealthy, but oh well. It's actually remarkably healthy. That's that's the whole point. That's the whole that's the whole draw to him. So I mean, I'm game. It, let's go. You want to go after the show? Let's let's <laughs> do it. Um, so Bison basketball. Yeah, back in action. I mean, it's hard to believe. There's no snow on the ground yet. It's hard to believe basketball is here. But I mean, they both look. They both struggled to start the year, but they look good. I mean, lots of athleticism in the men's team. The women's team, just a lot of new players, eight new players. So we really don't know what they're going to be made of yet. I mean, it's going to be kind of an up-and-down start, but, I mean, both of them have just a lot of potential this year. We, yeah, we saw a little bit uh, this week, and uh, the, the men's team struggled a little bit against against you, uh, uh, Moorhead, excuse me, yeah. and uh, it, it didn't look too great, but they had plenty of, you know, like you said, potential to, to do well. To push it on. The women's team looked great. Uh, they finished out strong and uh, hopefully we'll have a good year. Yeah, I mean, the men cut a tough break. MSUM shot over 60%. They were at 80% till the fourth quarter, till late in the second half. Scotty so, I mean, Kenny was on you fire. Can't, you can't help that, but yeah. a tough loss, to anyways. Yeah, well, we'll see how it goes. Be sure to pick up your copy of the Spectrum and check us out at ndsubin.com. Thank you.